New year, new me, and a new opportunity to do My Ships Don't Lie as Colombia. So we will form Gran Colombia and acquire 10 battleships and 10 aircraft carriers. Now the easy way would be to form Gran Colombia and then build those ships. But what if we found them elsewhere? Who could possibly provide us with a nice amount of free ships? Oh, I bet you'd like to know. I bet you'd like to know indeed. Hmm, or maybe these guys. Hmm. Today, I'm going to try once again to get the achievement without building a single battleship or a single aircraft carrier. I will steal the fleets of the world until we have our achievement. And to do that, let's start by getting rid of the army, because I don't actually trust them. As for focuses, political effort, because we will need to change our ways. Unfortunately, we start as democratic, which isn't good for what we're about to do. I need a little bit more fascism in here. So we'll flip that. Research will grab the electronic mechanic engineering and I think it would not be a terrible idea if we got some trains so people can get around the country speaking of getting around the country let's build these railways so the supply hubs are all plugged in don't need them at maximum level level one will do and we'll also get an intelligence agency the SIC we'll take these finers this band the air wing and go and sell them on the market good amount of uh, production out of that I think somebody's gonna buy them and we are going to set course now to victory and glory actually no we're gonna take this navy and exercise it permanently it will permanently exercise until we're ready to use it ah the dutch want my terrible fighters perfect all right we have our agency what i would like to grab is these top five uh, sorry top four the unfortunately named pills are also good invisible ink is good definitely cryptology but all of that is for later i'm gonna start out with the pills and the naval department and that's where i'm gonna halt it mostly because it's just really expensive in terms of civilian factories and i don't really have that many and it would not be a terrible idea to use the one we have available to actually just buy some steel. I'm gonna need a lot of guns for what's about to happen, and we don't have a lot of guns. Speaking of guns, we also want a little bit of artillery. We want a little bit of support equipment. We want to assign an MIO to the initial production run. I don't know why the game doesn't do that automatically. Then we just want more guns. Of course, we also want some trains, we want some trucks, we want some AA, but right now we can't afford any of that. Political effort is done. We're gonna take a sidestep and grab naval efforts, because I'm not gonna be building any capital ships, or at least not battleships and aircraft carriers. I will need to build some smaller vessels. I'm also going to grab the fascist demagogue and set us on our course. Got the electronic mechanical engineering. Let's grab mechanical computing next. With the railway being built relatively quickly, I'll just follow up with a little bit of infrastructure in the southern state. This is the only state that sticks with us, so that's where I concentrate my initial building. The reason I use infrastructure first is because we start on civilian economy and military and civilian factories get a very, well, a reasonably large penalty to construction, while infrastructure and dockyards don't, and infrastructure has the bonus that it's the higher the infrastructure in a state, the quicker you can build there. So it's uh, it's got a bit of a compounding effect if you build infrastructure early. Let's grab a chief of the army. I'm going to go with the maneuver guy. Defense, I don't like as much. Army organization is definitely decent, actually quite good, but I value speed more. Now, if there were an attack expert, I'd hire him, but that's not the case. So maneuver is what we're getting. All right, we have naval effort. Now we'll take industrial effort all the way down to armament effort three. The extra dockyards can serve to both repair our ships and to build more destroyers. We'll take 1936 destroyer hulls, slap on a cheap light battery, a good light engine, and a good uh, cheap torpedo launcher, assign an MIO, and put these bad boys into production. They don't have to do all that much, mostly just get in the way of the enemy. All right, we have our civilian trains. Let's keep researching. Gonna grab better guns. Actually, no, sidestep. We are going to grab transports. We are going to be naval invading people. I want to be able to do that and add some trains to the mix here. We have 35 armor. Our Navy experience. Let's go and assign Naval Reform. Get 15% more experience. The sooner you get it, the more worthwhile it is. We also have political power. We have more than 10% support for the fascists. We can prepare for civil war. We're not going to fire it just yet. One, we can't afford to. And two, we don't have enough. Well, we have too much stability. And three, we need this to be at least 29 to 30%. Long story short, if you start the civil war with your fascism support or in, or your revolutionary party, let's say, it's, it's support below 30%, you will get events that either cause you to flip back to being democratic or that launch a civil war. And you want to avoid 
both options. And the way to do that is to get your support to 30%. I'm gonna sidetrack to recruit and deploy, division designer, and we're gonna add an empty template. We will add one cavalry. This is cheap as chips. And all this has to do is do our garrison duties in future, but we'll need one of these for the initial civil war. Don't give it a location, simply keep it here. At the civil war, your equipment stockpiles will be split roughly in half, and the army will also be divided. If you only have a single division in the field, it's a bit of a flip. It could go to them. It could go to you. If there's only a single division in the queue, that division always goes to you. So this is a way of ensuring that there is no standing army out, not for them, and you have a unit ready to go straight away. With it being cavalry and being very cheap, you can get it ready instantly and end the war before it actually starts. They will not be able to get a unit ready before you can simply capitulate them. I'm just hoarding political power so we can spark the revolution and have some leftover to go to either war economy or justify the first war goals. We are on a bit of a timer. We are then going to ignite the civil war. It's going to be really, really easy. Because of the level of our support, we start out with up two areas. That's great. So we just need to take Medellin and Cartagena. It's easy. We'll take the horse. We'll deploy it right here underneath Cartagena. Sign it a general, any general. Let about an hour take by. Walk into Medellin and then straight to Cartagena and it should be done. We've taken Cartagena. It is over. The Navy returns to us. Most of the equipment returns to us. Us, and we can continue on. The Navy exercises, get the dockyards assigned again because they got unassigned. And that is it. So production is coming along nicely. We're making the better equipment, trying to make as much of the good stuff as we can. So we're making infantry equipment one now. We lost the efficiency here mostly because the factories became unassigned due to the Civil War, but that's okay. As for your uh, MIOs, I don't really have a guide for you. The short answer is pick whatever gets you more production efficiency or production bonuses first, and then pick whatever gives you soft attack or breakthrough. Anyway, we'll now get rid of the horse and we'll queue up a couple of infantry divisions. We can afford roughly nine of them, but we are going to make some changes to this because this is not great. So we'll remove the horse to replace it with infantry, make it about 12 with infantry for now. We're going to grab mountain infantry. Mountaineers are going to be great for Venezuela, for Ecuador, but I don't think he'll be ready for Ecuador, but definitely for Peru. Like the entirety of Peru is mountains. Their capital is mountains. It's going to be a pain in the ass to take them out, but not if we can use our navy and some mountaineers to do it. We've got construction effort. Keep going. So we want to go down until the extra research slot here. And we'll save up political power so we can go to war economy. So we're starting to build this country up. Once the infrastructure finishes, we are going to follow up with military factories. We got radios. Let's keep the economy going forward. We're going to need a lot more guns, a lot more everything, really. We got a nice amount of artillery, though. That's pretty cool. Let's add it to our our units and we'll add support artillery here. It's expensive, but we can afford it. Our infrastructure effort done. A sidetrack here into construction effort three and then down to the research slot. Looks like we're mostly missing infantry and support equipment as expected. Still, I'm going to force deploy these guys so they can at least do a little bit of exercising. The moment the war starts, we're just going to land troops in Panama City. We don't even need to garrison the border, honestly. Let the Panamans walk out or the Panamese or whatever, and we'll, we'll just capture Panama from the rear. More and more army experience coming in. I'm going to grab bold attack. This means when our generals level up, they're likely to get more attack. I want attack. It does more damage. It's always good. As for Spirit of Naval Academy, I like getting best of the best. I don't know if it's actually the best, but it does mean I get to appoint a level three admiral instead of a level one admiral. So it's a start, right? It's a start. How is the production coming along? Could be better, could be worse. We're ready for war in about 20 days. So I'm going to stop the exercises so I can land those troops. We'll simply declare the war. I'll let them walk their single unit out of Panama. This Navy can sit on naval and invasion support for a little bit. Yep, they've taken a tile. That's their entire navy committed. And now we simply invade Panama from the rear. We'll take out Panama without ever having fought a battle. All of their equipment is ours. Select all, submit demands, confirm and exit. And we're done here. We now also control the Panama Canal, which I thought was in the control of Panama Canal. Apparently it's not. This means our navy can now move to the other side of the continent. Let's sail them over to that other naval base Panama has. And we'll plan to do the same, the exact same to Ecuador. While we're waiting for these extra units to be deployed, we'll look at the Mountaineer divisions. We are going to be using Mountaineers to mostly fight Peru. 
24 army experience. So we want 16 with worth of mountaineers. Save that. And then we want a little bit of artillery until they are at 25 with. So three artillery worth. It's pricey, but these guys will be very, very elite. I'd like to add support artillery and engineer company. So it's going to de depend on whether or not I can afford it. I'm going to use the name list again for the member divisions. These guys get to be named after members as well. So any one of our channel members gets added to a name list every month and it gets uh, cycled at random through a mod that will simply name divisions after channel members. I forgot to turn it on at the start, but I'm going to add them now. So if you want to see yourself doing glorious battles in service of Bitter Steel, why not uh, get a channel membership? It supports the channel, it supports me, and it allows you to fight for the cause. Once we have the extra research slot, we're going to take collectivist ethos and go down to militarism for 5% recruitable pop. Definitely going to be very, very helpful. Other things that are going to be helpful are a couple of these mountaineer units. We'll put them in the queue. A rather high priority. They're going to be our shock troops to break through. Quito is very likely to be empty since the entire Ecuador army is... Ah, uh, uh, damn it. They're marching their units around. So it's a little bit RNG. So in this case, there are two infantry units here. I don't know why. And the rest of their army is up here. I really don't know why they kept two units down here. Maybe because they feel threatened by Peru. In any case, uh, these units should now move south. These units should now help take the port and march into Quito. The units in the south here should again, help to take the port, and the rest of these guys should march on Quito to take the capital. We'll take Guayaquil. This combat's gonna end. We've taken Quito, and that is Ecuador overrun. Simply annex all of it. Don't forget about the Galapagos Islands. Next target is Venezuela. We'll take the entire army and park it on the border with Venezuela. Actually, no. We have a little bit of time, so we're gonna take the entire army. We're gonna park it on Cartagena and exercise a little bit. We definitely want to train more troops, though, but we're out of manpower. We should be able to get some from militarism. And the rest of these units can effectively set up a defense roughly here. Don't really care about the Venezuelans walking into our territory. Again, anything down south? Yes, they might take the state of Meta if they are really willing to walk all the way down. It doesn't matter as much if it means their stuff's undefended. So the plan is to draw them in to let them walk into my territory again. I naval invade their capital and their other port. Go for the victory point at San Felix and then hit Maracaibo as hard as I can with the units I have. And that is the war goal done. We'll now justify on Peru. There we go. We have militarism. Let's shift over to army effort now. So we have manpower coming in. We're going to declare the war. We stop training. The units are entrenched. They're exercised. They're ready to go. The navy can stop doing its navy stuff and provide naval invasion support to the north. And now we're going to hold and wait and see what the enemy does. So they're coming in pretty hard and fast, but we're going to let them walk in. They'll weaken themselves. We can attack that position. They just expended all their organization attacking into these mountains. So we'll take that position, effectively surround Maracaibo so we can take it at a later date. Yeah, the theme of this whole thing is annoying. Anyway, Mountaineers at least landed, so we're going to push out now. Going to hit them here and then roll over into Caracas. All I need to do now is take Maracaibo and it's over. There we go. That should be Venezuela capitulated. Hurrah, just as Bogota is being stormed. Select all, submit demands, confirm and exit. We've eaten Venezuela. Great. And now we plan for our next move. So we're going to be um, hitting Peru next. We'll deploy some more divisions, another eight infantry to the front line. We'll exercise these guys and I can now train another two units of mountaineers. Wonderful. Actually, just one unit of mountaineers. That will bring us up to 40, 24 units. I'll take one of the other units here and simply convert it to Sigurd Andreasen. Congratulations, you can now be a mountaineer. More air bonuses, but we'll take a detour to industry. We need the industry to actually build build the stuff for researching and the Columbian economy. Right now, not all that amazing. So I'm using three divisions per tile here. So a total of nine divisions, one mountaineer and two infantry on the northern tile, two mountaineers and one infantry on Lima, and then the same on the tile below Lima. Hopefully that will be sufficient to overwhelm whatever defense Peru has. I'm really hoping they commit to the north. Let's just research those paratroopers. I'm going to need them. All right, here we are. We got a little bit of a naval battle with the Peruvian Navy. It damaged them enough to force them to go back to port. That means they're currently not projecting any naval superiority. So the quick fix to our problem is to 
take the navy and tell them to patrol for a little bit in these two sea zones. Eventually, they're going to run into the enemy navy. Little naval battle happens. Not a lot of damage occurs, but enough damage will occur that the enemy will decide to repair their navy while their navy is repairing, not projecting. Meanwhile, we quickly switch to naval invasion support. And as a result, that means we have green seas. We can now use those green seas to invade. I lost a lot of time waiting for that, so learn from my mistake. Meanwhile, at least these nine divisions are on their way to victory and glory, hopefully. And then we can follow up with a full-out attack from the south. North. Yes, from the north to the south. That's the one. Oh, they got a lot of units dedicated to guarding their coast. So another thing that Paradox made much, much more difficult is naval invasions, because the AI is better at using its troops to guard itself against naval invasions. Most of the time, it doesn't really matter that much. In this case, though, it's an absolute shit show, because the entirety of the Peruvian coast is mountains. Now, fortunately, I am using mountaineers who should have a bit of an edge here, but as you can tell, it's going to be a pain in the ass. We're going to launch an attack from the north as well to keep these units pinned down so they don't rush a billion divisions south to come and help. Anyway, we've managed to land in Lima, and I think the tile above Lima as well will now hold this position. It's moving, it's moving, it's moving, it's moved. Okay, so we've cut this place in half. Of these guys, everybody goes south, except for the basic bitch infantry. You guys can hold the northern section. These guys aggressively attack south into these now encircled infantry divisions, and we'll use the mountaineers to try and push south towards Arequipa, or at least keep this whole thing contained. Got a little bit of an air force here. It's doing something. So we got green air or yellow air. And we got air. We're already well on our way. I think we've outmaneuvered them. That is Arequipa taken, and Peru is going to capitulate. And it's over. It's all Jover now. All we need here is the this province of Pastaza and the province of Loreto. We'll also take their entire fleet because why not? Then we are going to puppet them in all their provinces. We'll add war reparations on everything as well as resource rights on everything. And that should be enough. Let's end it. Confirm an exit. Germany is still Germanying. We have a Peruvian puppet giving us all of their civilian and several of their military factories plus all of their resources. And we can now press the button to revive Bolivar's legacy. That means we've cored all of that. This gives us factories. This gives us manpower. This gives us hope. We'll make more stuff while we go here. Mostly going to need fighters. Keep making toad artillery. Keep making infantry equipment, of course. Trade for whatever we need right now. And we're going to see if Germany wants to uh, allow us into their faction. Great. They will allow us to join their faction, which we're going to do. But we're not going to start any wars just yet. We're simply going to join their faction and fly or sail our entire army over to... Let's just send them over there. We're not going to join any of their wars. That is the fall of Paris and Vichy France has been created. Vichy France is independent, but guaranteed by the German Reich. They're also fascist. So if we are going to simply justify Vichy, we get a war goal. We're in the Axis, so Germany is not going to honor their guarantee. Vichy is also fascist and very unlikely to join the Allies. They're also super weak because they just lost and most of their army is gone. So what are we going to do now? All of the infantry is going to march right on over here. All of our air is going to fly on right over there. And we're also going to deploy our carrier planes there. Our, um, I forget what the word, transports. That's that's the one. All right, now that we're setting up for the final, well, the final, the, the next stage, let's also add some artillery to our basic infantry. I'm still a little bit short, but I'm making more. This brings them up to 15 width, at least makes them competent. As for our mountaineers, we're going to add rangers to them, makes them even more competent. We'll need support equipment. I'm also going to add anti-air just to give them a little bit more bite. These guys are still going to be doing the heavy lifting. Obviously, I cannot just walk my troops across here. We need an inn. And the easiest way in is to, uh, and this is going to sounds stupid. The easiest way in is to para drop one of these bordering tiles. Because if I take that tile, for instance, it becomes Bolivian. And from there, I can then spread. We also definitely want to put a spy in France because it is very, very likely that capitulating them will not happen by taking everything in France. They have cores in Algeria. So we need to either land in Algeria, which is going to be a little difficult without any way to get across. Air is going to be extremely difficult un un unless I get the Spanish to give me military access, which they won't. I don't think I can reach from the Italian area here. I don't think I can paratroop through Tripoli here, but maybe I can hit one of these tiles, provided they don't put any units there. But it's very unlikely that I'll be able to naval invade. So if I can't get to uh, Algeria... 
What I can do is do like a single collaboration government and that should be enough. And then I just need to take mainland France, but it's going to depend on whether or not that's uh, it's feasible. Justification is done. We're going to declare war. Nobody's going to get involved. I am squeezing my buttocks right now. Let's also hire the elusive gentleman for additional espionage capacity. The paratroopers are ready to go. I have no airplanes up because there's no point to it. Please, God, let the order continue. Please tell me it works. Please tell me it works. Please tell me it works. Please. Oh my God, it worked. It worked. It worked. It worked. We have uh, we have liftoff. We have liftoff. Memory can commence and then straight into Vichy itself. The drop worked. Ladies and gentlemen, we have liftoff. We have liftoff into Lyon. Go, 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 go. All right, they are responding, but I should be able to take Vichy. Okay, with Vichy in hand, I have a supply hub. Let's head down to the coast. I should definitely be able to overwhelm whatever it is they have here. This is so funny, though. I have full supply because I connect to the German <laughs> railway network. There's a lot more units here than I anticipated, but it's okay. Getting to Algiers, though, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Anyway, the French army is cut down to pieces. They should be wiped out soon. I'll take mainland France and then either wait for the espionage agency to do its job and get a collaboration government, or I can try to get the France, which is not likely. I think that's the French army gone. It's two divisions, four divisions, six divisions. I don't think they're going to make it that way. What? What? Romania joined the allies? This is historical. Why are they? What? All right, naval invasions are planned and ready to go. Just need to get the Navy here. Naval invasion support in one, two, three tiles, and we're off to Casablanca. Now, it does look like the French aren't trying to contest our naval superiority or our naval landing. That's good. At least I'll be able to land with minimal effort in Casablanca and then quickly try and push out. All right, we've landed and we'll bring the rest of the army in. All we have to do is take Algiers. I'm going to quickly justify a war goal on the British to retake our core state, and I'm also going to train a couple of additional units. Not a lot, like another 12. I don't know if we'll be able to deploy them because we are really, really short on artillery, but I can force deploy them with limited units. Anyway, <clears throat> the French have gone. We managed to take Algiers. First off, the Navy. What do we get? Some ships. So I'm guessing cruisers mostly, a couple of heavies, no aircraft carrier. I think the free French have the aircraft carrier. So I got the Navy. I'm going to puppet them in bits and pieces. I don't want to hold on to Vichy itself and puppeting them in, in this really disgusting <laughs> patchwork of nations is highly superior to just puppeting one nation because now all these tiny nations are going to go through their focus tree, giving you factories. Now let's get our guys over here to the port beneath Hamburg. This is my go-to place for invasions. Launch an invasion from here. Land between Newcastle and Hull. And hopefully we can we can make it happen. We do have a bit of a navy now, but it needs some repairs. Also, can't forget there are borders here with the allied forces that we need to garrison. Hopefully I can get some of these guys deployed, but I am short on equipment. All right, got my war goal on Britain. It's a core, so I don't have to declare the war right away. I'm not going to because I, I kind of need a couple of troops to defend the homeland first. The way to go is going to be mountaineers leading the way because they have all the soft attack and we'll supplement with some basic infantry on the flanks. Those five tiles will try to overwhelm. We'll put the navy in these two sea zones and we'll bring the air force such as it is in as well. All the spies into the UK as well. I need to see as much as possible of the area and of their ship deployment and of all the other stuff that you can possibly see. Let's grab an industrial concern for some more research and then probably a chief of the navy would probably not be a terrible idea. Speaking of navy, it's repaired. So let's bring it all over to the port beneath Hamburg. It should be ready to go soon. Gonna have it exercised a little bit just for the XP. I have plenty of fuel for it. And in case they do engage, I don't want them to engage while they're fresh. That, that That's just pointless. I think the Navy's ready. I'll send them to naval invasion support in these two sea zones. As for the submarines, oh, I wouldn't say they're ready, but they're going to have to be ready. Convoy railing in these two sea zones for submarines, that projects the same amount of naval superiority as using strike force. But at least this way, we, maybe we can bait their Navy into fighting our Navy. At least that's my hope. I got my spies spying away, so I know a lot about where their navy is, and I know that most of it's around the UK, so it's gonna be a pain. Oh, this is gonna suck, isn't it? I really just hope that the navy we stole is sufficient to launch the naval invasion. We're on our way. The naval invasion launched. I have naval superiority. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, that sounded like a naval invasion. Well, I might be in for a bad time at home, but at least I'll be able to take the other guys home out, right? So... 
win some, lose some. So it looks like the UK is actually defending itself quite well. I think we'll be okay. You support that attack, you support that attack, and I think we'll be able to land the troops. I hope. Yeah, we'll, we'll take Hull easily. You go there, you go there. We'll try to take Newcastle. Unlikely that we'll take Newcastle, but we'll take Hull though. And the Navy still hasn't been destroyed, I think. That is Hull taken. Now we take the entire army and we just go, 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 go. The goal will be to encircle London. Hopefully doing that, we'll be able to gather up a little bit of um, very much needed war participation. Because right now we're sitting on 1%. We want this line to go up, obviously. This is going to require a little bit of maneuvering, but I think we have the South pretty much tied down. This is done though. Oh, they've deployed a unit. I'm going to fight it. I'm going to make it surrender. And then I'm not going to actually take London. It's very important that I don't actually take London. I need to draw this out a little bit more still. Oh my God, somehow London got taken. Oh, there goes my brilliant plan. Yes, we're committed. There goes the UK. Oh, I'm so pissed off now. So there's really nothing I can take in terms of land because I'm very much focusing on the Navy. Well, well, we'll see what we can get. I mostly need aircraft carriers first. So we'll look for those here. Yeah, I think seven's all I can get. There are converted cruiser hulls here, like the um, HMS Hermes, but I don't know if that counts. I'm going to go with probably not. These are converted battleship hulls, but I think they count as it. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm going to go with probably, but not sure. So I'm just going to focus on getting some more battleships so I can easily get to the easy peasy Japanesey next. I also want British Guiana because it's mine. We have a massive navy and we're going to put it to good use. I'm going to gather it all up and we're going to make way for the next target here. We have somebody to take out. No, I'm going to cancel the justification, mostly because it takes a while to sail over there. Let's group up these units. 24 divisions. I think we'll head to Saigon. That's the closest place I can go. And then I need to do a little bit of island hopping into probably first Taiwan and then from Taiwan into the islands themselves. And then I can take the Japanese Navy. All right, we have our war goal. Our naval invasions are planned and ready to go. I got a bit of an air force nearby. Let's hit Taiwan. One first from Taiwan, maybe go on to Okinawa or we'll just go straight for the mainland or rather the home islands should be easy enough. Now the Japanese Navy is large, but I think mine is larger at this point. So we'll find out soon. I'm not going to get anyone involved in this war. Now Sweden's going to embargo me. That's fine. I wasn't trading with you anyway. Our fleet is so massive that our oil reserves are struggling. I'm also in short, uh, I need trains, I need oil, I need everything right now, but we're fine. At least we'll take this island. And now we plan an invasion of the home islands. I did lose like way more equipment and manpower than I expected. I got really, really beat up by their submarines. I didn't think it would be this bad with a, a massive naval escort, but I guess they're just not really good at, you know, finding the enemy. We did land, and so we're now going to take out the Japanese as best we can as quickly as we can. Now, if we allow uh, a, a real defense to crystallize here, the Japanese home islands can get really annoying to take. So you either need to blitz through or just be really clever and outmaneuver the enemy because they can be super annoying in this area. I do mean super annoying. And bit by bit, we're taking the Japanese army apart, such as it still exists. I don't expect much more resistance once we once we mop up this that is probably the majority of their forces dealt with once this pocket here is gone that's most of the army they have on the mainland gone uh, on the islands gone and the rest is on the mainland still fighting china and doing really really poorly all right i think that's japan dead oh thank god that's japan dealt with we'll take the aircraft carriers now oh no please tell me they still have aircraft carriers. yes two regular aircraft carriers three aircraft carriers yes yep that's all the carriers we need and we'll just take whatever we can navy wise now japan is pretty much at the mercy of china so there's not really a lot we can do here japan got to keep most of japan i, I guess that's fine but more importantly i got to keep most of the japanese navy so we're now just going to group up the glorious navy and let's sail these bad boys home to bolivia so our beautiful navy has gathered we have 410 surface vessels 300 destroyers 26 light cruisers 38 heavy cruisers, 6 battle cruisers, 26 battleships, and 14 aircraft carriers. I think we have uh, established that my ships don't lie. Extreme Edition is still very much possible. At this point, it's only 1941. I could go in on the Soviet Union, or I could stab Germany and Italy in the back. I could take out the United States, but I don't want to do any of those things because we've achieved our goals. Why should we fight when we can sit here, sell oil, and look at our beautiful 
beautiful, beautiful vessels in the glorious port of Cartagena. Anyway, that is my take on Colombia and my ships don't lie. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys will enjoy this next one as well. See ya.